in this week's reading, you basically have a PDF of how we got the Bible that goes into a lot more detail than this presentation will. But check that out. Uh, this is just a timeline of key events in the history of the Bible, kind of a shortened version of what you have in the PDF. As Christians, we believe that Scripture is inspired by God. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, it says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Also, in 2 Peter 1, 20 through 21, it says, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Bible is basically made up of 66 different books, written over a span of 1,600 years, basically between the years of 1,500 B.C. and A.D. 100. It's written by more than 40 kings, prophets, leaders, and followers of Jesus. The Old Testament is made up of 39 books. Those books are written between 1,500 and 400 B.C. They're written on stone, leather, and clay. The New Testament is made up of 27 books and was written approximately uh, between 45 and 100 A.D. and was written on papyrus. The oldest New Testament fragment that we actually have uh, comes from John 18. It's copied in Greek on a papyrus codex or a folded book around A.D. 110 through 130. The Old Testament was written mainly in Hebrew with some Aramaic. So you see the Aramaic letters there. Uh, and also an example of the letter Aleph uh, in the Hebrew script. The New Testament was written in Greek. Basically, you have a, a sample of Greek letters there and an example of the letter Alpha in Koine Greek dialect, which is different than modern Greek. The Old Testament uh, events are written down in Hebrew over uh, many centuries. Portions of that are in Aramaic. In Exodus, the Lord tells Moses to write in a book. Other writers inspired by God include leaders, kings, and prophets. Together, these writings on leather scrolls and other materials are called the Hebrew Scriptures or Old Testament. Followers of Jesus write eyewitness reports or the Gospels, history, letters to other believers, and the Revelation. Includes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, uh, basically any of the letters from Paul, James, Peter, Jude, uh, as what you see in the New Testament. The original writings are copied and circulated so that by approximately A.D. 150, there is a wide enough use of them to speak of the New Testament or New Covenant. Kind of in comparison or in contrast to what we call the Old Testament now. Early translations were in Latin or Coptic from Egypt, or Syriac from Syria, and you see an example of an early Coptic translation here in the picture. Early church fathers between 200 and 300 uh, AD accepted the writings of the Gospels and Paul's letters as canonical, basically meaning from a, from a Greek word referring to the rule of faith and truth. Basically, they used a series of rules to decide which books uh, were to be included in a canon of scripture. They used several different ways of determining this, but they did not just pick and choose according to whim. The canon refers to the authoritative books that are officially accepted and approved as Holy Scripture. These books are based on a standard or rule of faith. Some of these standards include divine inspiration, accuracy, doctrinal truth, consistency, power, and acceptance by the people of God. The 27 books of the New Testament are formally confirmed at a canonic, as canonical by the Synod of Carthage in A.D. 397, thus recognizing three centuries of use by the followers of Christ. It doesn't mean that they were not using them uh, and believing them to be the Bible or believing them to be God's word. Uh, they were just officially recognized by the church so that no one can come and start adding different books that were not inspired, that were not by apostles, that were not by the series of things that we discussed in the previous slide. Bible copies uh, were made on several different things, including animal skins from calves or antelope, which is called vellum, and sheep or goats, which is called parchment. Uh, they are used uh, for over a thousand years to make the copies of the Bible, between 300 and 1400. 
to the oldest vellum copies that we have fall uh, in the bracket between 325 and 350 AD. They are the Vatican Codex and the Synaptic Codex. Before the printing press is invented, the Bible is copied by hand very accurately. In many cases, it's copied by special scribes who develop intricate methods of counting words and letters to ensure that no errors are made. The first example of an English Bible is translated from Latin in AD 1382. It's called the Wycliffe Bible in honor of the priest and Oxford scholar John Wycliffe. And you see an example of a page from the Wycliffe Bible there. The world's first printing press with movable metal type is invented in AD 1455 in Mainz, Germany by, by Johann Gutenberg. This invention is perhaps the single most important event to influence the spread of the Bible. Before, they just basically had to have copies or have it read uh, or share with one another orally. We're not able to necessarily read it or didn't have access to it to be able to read it uh, up until this point in which it was printed uh, in mass. The Gutenberg Bible is the first book ever printed with the printing press. This Latin Vulgate version is often illuminated by artists who hand paint letters and ornaments on each page. You see an example of the Gutenberg Bible uh, off to the right. William Tyndale, priest and Oxford scholar, translates the New Testament from Greek into English, but cannot get approval to publish it in England. Basically, uh, a lot of the church at this time did not want uh, lay people or people that were not in the employ of the church to be able to read the Bible. They wanted to read it to them or explain it to them. So in some churches at that time manipulated that information to have power over the people. William Tyndale moves to Germany and prints Bibles, smuggling them into England in sacks of corn and flour. And in AD 1535, he publishes part of the Old Testament translated from Hebrew into English. The Coverdale Bible is translated by Miles Coverdale in 1535 and dedicated to Anne Boleyn, one of King Henry's uh, the Eighth's wives. This is the first complete Bible to be printed, printed in English. So you see an example of one page of this particular Bible. And then we come to the King James Version. In 1611, G King James I commissions 54 scholars to undertake a new Bible translation. For six years, six teams of scholars in using the Textus Receptus, Bishop's Bible, and the Tyndale's Bible complete the new version in A.D. 1611. The King James Version is also called the Authorized Version, even though King James never gave the finished version his royal approval. It uses the best-known manuscripts available at the time and is revised several times. And you see an example of the original 1611 version of the King James Bible. The King James edition used today is last revised in A.D. 1769. However, it does not make use of any recently discovered manuscripts, including Codex Alexandrius. It is the most popular Bible for more than 300 years. And of course, you have lots of different translations that come after the King James Bible, a lot of which use the newer transcripts to compare to the older transcripts to make sure we have a proper translation. Between, eight, between 1629 and A.D. 1947, several of the earliest known copies of the Bible were found, including the Codex Alexandrius, a copy of the New Testament from A.D. 400, is perhaps the best copy of the Book of Revelation. It is made available to Western scholars in A.D. 1629. Basically, this, along with other discoveries, make it possible to have better, more precise translations other than the King James Bible.